Hey, welcome. It's uh, April 22nd, 2012. You're viewing the listening to the Nerd Stalker Tech Week podcast number 28. I'm Greg Valoria, a.k.a. Social Greg on Twitter, and you are? I am Adolfo Franda, a.k.a. at Nerd Stalker on Twitter. Yes, I suppose you could be watching or listening to this right now, right, Greg? So, <laughs> yeah. That's right. I, either way, still works. Still good for us. It's, <laughs> it's hat day, too, apparently, here on the, on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, so, for those of you listening, uh, <laughs> imagine that I have a really... Really cool, uh, old-timey type of hat on, and Greg has a big purple sort of crazy fluffy top hat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tokyo Giants, man. We'll it. explain that a little later. It. I know. So great okay. great stuff. That's As usual, cool. a lot of yes. good news. Greg, so what is this? A tale of two acquisitions. A few thoughts. Oh, man. It's cool. Yes. Uh, so give from, us a, uh, give John us a Cook at GeekWire. Yeah, John Cook of GeekWire uh, kind of gave us, uh, thank you, uh, this story. Um, it, it's kind of the big ac- uh, billion-dollar acquisitions that happened over the last couple of weeks, right? Uh, Microsoft and uh, AOL and uh, Facebook and uh, and your your favorite, which people are just crying about, um, Instagram, right? Ah. So it's not every day. Yeah, it's not every day that you know the tech industry sees two of its giants fork over a billion dollars, right? Yeah. So, um, but if you think about it, what kind of impact does it really have on the everyday technology consumer? So, well, such is life in the world of tech here, right? Yeah. Where an AG company like AOL can sell its patents portfolio to Microsoft and and emerge uh, emerging upstart like Instagram can double its valuation almost overnight, mm. right? So, yeah. so, so I think you know some of these are pretty exciting. You know, when you think about acquisitions, right? Especially when you're talking one bill, right? Yeah. And I think that um, you know the Microsoft patent play a buy. I'm not quite sure exactly mm-hmm. what the software giant intends to do with that, but mm-hmm. I'm sure the evil Seattle Empire's legal force has a diabolical scheme sure. for around I'm that. Sure. I'm sure it has something to do with <laughs> making money. So yeah. <laughs> yes, 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 licensing maybe. Um but uh but you know, I think the more the news when you hear on the Twitterverse when the Instagram was bought, I, I think there was just a lot of people who were just kinda, you know, figuring out like, huh, what? Yeah. What? Yeah. What's going on here? Mm-hmm. And um uh, I don't know. What what do you think you've been reading and I, I could follow up with some of that stuff. I mean what what do you think about that? Your Instagram is here, right? Uh, or not? No, really? I've you know, we were Android users, so we've been in this sort of ghetto uh, of non Instagram land for a long time and we've been using other really great That's apps though like you know Pick Please and um there was a few I am uh which is E Y E E M yeah. yeah. a lot of fantastic ones actually that that really do oh. the exact same thing that Instagram uh does. So when I installed Instagram on the Android I was really underwhelmed mm. to be quite honest and, and go, is this what all the weight has been for and the hubbub is about <laughs> oh, um, that's but right, yeah. you know I, I guess as a noob to uh instagram uh, i guess i just don't understand and, and there's a monstrous you know user base obviously for instagram uh in terms of the acquisition its value um i i suppose you know the 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 justifications that I've been hearing are things about the photos, right? So uh, how important right. the photos are right. uh, for Facebook's timeline or, or something like that, right? Um, right. But a billion right. dollars worth, um, I, I honestly I I can't I can't see that value even in a in a talent grab. I can't even see that kind of value uh, a billion dollars there. Um, yeah, but I good agree on them. Good on I, them for I, making a deal like that. I heard they asked for two well, billion too. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. I guess, you know, whenever someone has a deep pocket, you could ask for a lot, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I think, you know, uh, one of one of my Twitter uh, followers and longtime friends, uh, Robert Fansgard, he works at uh, Capimini or whatever that is, mm. that IT um, house that mm. uh, does a lot of uh, strategy and stuff like that. Mm. But, you know, he, he brought up some good points that I thought, you know, if you're not paying for the product you are the product and and basically mm. facebook is is good at selling what you and i right yeah, yeah. our information and and the way we use it um you know i think that you know facebook is always has been notorious about buying startups right and then dismantling them and then mm. relocating their employees right mm. so i think you know there's going to be some of that going on um, i don't think i agree with you the talent grab thing doesn't even make any sense to me with mm. this acquisition yeah, right yeah. and um you know i think uh you know integration with spotify you know and other things you well, know Greg, worst case scenarios do you think, do you think facebook could have built this themselves 
Well, you know, I was kind of wondering about that because, like you said I just, earlier, <laughs> I downloaded the, I downloaded the Instagram app and I was totally underwhelmed too because I, I I I'm a Lightbox user, right? And, and well, there so. You go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, there's yeah, no shortage of these things, Greg. Like, is what I'm saying. You know what I mean? No, so, so apparently no, no, it's yeah. doable, right? And these, I doubt any of these I companies spend is. a billion dollars doing it, right? Um, and, yeah. and does Facebook really need all those users? I mean, how many users do they have already? Right? It's not like they're at a shortage for users, right? <laughs> and that, not only that, yeah. and, and sorry to interrupt here, but like, uh, you know, they're about to go no, IPO, no, no. Go, right? Go for it. They, they're about yeah. to go IPO. Yeah, so exactly. There's a lot of concern here by investors that. Uh, Zuckerberg is going to make these type of rash type of decisions, right? Um, I don't think the board was consulted uh, when it came to this acquisition. Uh, I heard Twitter oh, was really? interested, so I, I, I'm not sure if it was just one of those, let's get them before someone so else this type was, of grabs. This was, so, so this was basically the uh, type of uh, acquisition that you're looking at from a, um, uh, I guess, you know, maybe, maybe they were re- – Overreacting to a, a, a something that they heard, um, you know, on the rumorville mill, or maybe it was real, you know, and they just wanted to kind of block someone else from getting it. Maybe I that wonder, makes a lot of yeah, sense. Yeah, I wonder if this is just an inexperienced CEO or a young move or, or something like that. But he's got plenty of experience now. He's been he's quite like you said. They've acquired numerous startups. Um, this is just really really weird. So uh, I. Uh, yeah, people, we're reaching. We're really reaching to find some sort of justification for this thing, also. But you know, from mm, an investment standpoint, mm. too, a Wall Street standpoint, it's uh, you have to worry that if your CEO is going to make these type of uh, these types of decisions, is it you know, is it a sound right. a sound investment? Obviously, there is no competition to Facebook right now, so po- probably it is a sound investment. But or maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know. But. I don't know. It's just yeah, it's well, crazy. It's, it's a sound investment from the people who were investing in Instagram. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey man, at least it, hey, let's put it like this: Nokia lost a billion in a quarter, right? So they lost on Instagram. So good, uh, <laughs> good on okay, Facebook for we'll picking do that. One. Yeah, there you go. Okay, let's move on. Let's yeah, move on from acquisitions to the Windows Phone train wreck we're all out. What are yeah. your thoughts on that, man? So speaking of Nokia and uh, <laughs> a billion dollar quarter loss, one of many. <laughs> Yeah, man. So um, I did a, earlier this week, I did a little audio piece that I called uh, something like the, the death of wind, wind phone. Nice link bait, right? Um, when, whenever you do these like death, you know, Windows phone is dead kind of things, right? And I kind of tied them to rim, right? And, uh, yeah. and uh, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's been some serious, serious slip ups in the rollout of Windows phones. And, um, and mm. the, the pattern here is not getting better and and there's a a series of red flags in my opinion and and let me just sort of roll them out here to you so the the day they rolled out windows phone in in the united states was easter sunday yeah right on easter sunday at&t stores are closed so there were no lines right (laughs) so the day they they launched their flagship phone the nokia line high-end line of windows phones you could not buy them at a physical location, right? <laughs> Train wreck. Yeah, that was red flag one, right? And not only that, so yeah, these, yeah, yeah. these these poor saps that tie into these two year contracts. And granted, it's a ninety nine dollar phone, whatever. Get these phones, and and they're trying out this you know new phone or whatever. And uh, suddenly, there's a data connectivity loss issue, right? So like you're trying to get oh, your yeah, internet exactly. and this and that, and psh, gone, right? <laughs> Data connectivity loss. Right? Done. And so, what, what is Nokia Red does the right too. thing, and they, yeah, they pay out. You know, good. We'll give everyone a hundred bucks, essentially, right? So you're giving these phones away for free at this point, right? So good on them for that. Exactly. But not only that, the big, 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 big news now is that these, all these Windows phones now will not be. So, so they currently run a, a certain flavor of the operating system, right? I believe it's called Mango mm. or something like that mm. earlier. And the next version that's going to be rolled out is called Apollo, right? It's the upgrade to the Windows Phone. And um, none of these phones are going to be upgradable to Apollo. None of them. Zero. None of them. So you just bought yourself a, an end of life phone, people. You know what I mean? You just committed mm, to a contract with mm. a phone that's been end of life, essentially. Um, mm, so the excuse mm. you're you're hearing some people say, "Oh no, no, no! It's gonna you know it's gonna be some of these phones are gonna be upgradable to Apollo." No, no. The find writing, the the little writing and disclaimer in that part that some of those phones will be upgradable to Apollo is that bits of Apollo will be able to be installed on some of these oh. phones. The reason being is that Apollo is essentially Windows 8, right? 
and it requires a oh, whole other class of hardware. I mean, it just baseline. It needs a different class of hardware, right? So that tells right. us these these OEMs or whatever are going to put out a completely different hardware spec, right, for this this OS. And so it's going to be impossible right. to to try to get you know this. That'd be like trying to get the latest flavor of OS ten on some like ancient, uh, right. you know, like a, yeah. a Mac yeah, or right. something yeah. like that, right? It just it just can't be done. Right? Yeah. It's just it's a hard Hardware requirement <laughs> issue. So that's a huge thing. So if I wow. if I had committed to Windows Phone, uh, you know, as a user in this new thing, and and um, you know, I would be really upset right now. Um, you know, the diehards are you know diehards, so good on them. So not only that, so the Verge is reporting that Reuters um, has been a asking mm. questions, talking to a, to four of the major European telecom operators. That's um, and yeah. and reports are that they're all dissatisfied with the company's current range of Lumia handsets. So they're they're describing the Windows Phone devices as being overpriced due to their lack of real innovation, glitchy due to early battery life issues, and inadequately inadequately supported by Nokia's own marketing. Uh, the carriers seem to be in consensus about the new phone failures uh, to put up real competition to iOS and Android. Uh, put in starker terms, they don't believe that the Nokia Lumia phones are good enough to compete. That's a quote, good enough. Uh, an executive in mm -hmm. charge of the mobile phones at one of the big Euro carriers is cited as saying, quote, no one comes into the store and asks for a Windows phone, unquote, placing at least some of the blame on the tepid start of Nokia's reboot on Microsoft's shoulders. And uh, not only that, you know, uh, there's been talent loss issues now, too. Um, mm, uh, Boy Genius course, Reports is reporting that uh, uh, that the bleeding continues on the Windows Phone team. After only five months on the, on the job, Microsoft General Manager of Windows Phone Marketing, Gavin Kim, quit. Uh, this is an ex-Samsung bigwig guy. Um, also, oh, oh, man, he was just... He wasn't there that long. It yeah. doesn't seem like. Uh, yeah, and then I uh, remember. Nokia wow. is reporting Colin Giles, uh, who was, um, I believe, uh, let's see, Nokia head of sales stepped down uh, after only a year on the leadership team. So, you know, this is, as a whole, you know, this is not looking good right here, and which I was really hopeful because... Windows Phone is it's a beautiful operating system. The hardware, the the new right. high end Nokia phones look really really pretty too, um, but 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 there's these blunders. Uh, we'll see. You know, I say you know in my title that Windows Phone's dead, but uh, you, you never can count out Microsoft. I mean, they do throw uh, good money in after bad often, you know, and they are sort of the turtle in this in this race, and they are the distant distant I think uh, dark horse in this race. Um, the problem, mm. the problem mm. with this, you know, you hear arguments on the other side. Well, when the iPhone came out, it had the, you know, you can't hold it wrong issue, right? And, and, and this and that and this and that. But the thing is, is that uh, there was no competition back then, right? So they right. were creating the market, right. and now iPhone and and Android are such a behemoths now. If you're a new player trying to get into this game, you don't. You don't have that margin for mistake anymore, right? You, you're not allowed those right. things. You have to come out with an awesome experience and an awesome product and hit the ground running and compete. Yeah. You can't have all these excuses. Right. So that, that right. those were my, my kind of like my thoughts on the whole thing. So um, good luck to Windows Phone, I suppose. <laughs> Well, well, you think about it. we talked about remember when um, Google uh, one of the podcasts when Google bought Motorola, right? It, the Windows Phone sim or the operating system seems to think seem to be the alternative, right? It says like, well, okay, if if Google starts screwing us, us Samsung and HTC will go to the to the Windows Phone, right? Mm -hmm. And operating system, and I I think it's almost now showing that it's it's Google's game to lose now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If they don't play this right, maybe maybe yeah, it'll be a dive and catch on the on the on the Microsoft side, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But you and, know, and, like well, you said, it isn't looking Samsung good too. I think Samsung is very uh, with the Tizen operating system is is a very real player here too. True. True, true, very true, and they bought a lot of IP portfolio to support it. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, it sounds good. Wow. wow so, Greg, cool. man, let's move Excellent. on to the White House. Yes. What's what's the story here? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I I hear all these rumors, and you know, they always block streets in here when the president comes down, right? That's I, true. I'm off a of third street, and I hardly there isn't a week now that goes by that we haven't seen the president. Now it could be because it's you know um, the election Money year, but, time. Yeah, but yeah. besides that. 
<laughs> yeah, but but you know he's been having some uh, pretty serious talks. So what I hear from people around the the tech in uh, tech world here in Silicon Valley as well as SF Tech, you know he's been really trying to connect with the people there, and you know that's really what prompted this 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 whole thing about you know, the White House and the start of community. And then recently, um, at the beginning of the month, you know, the White House had asked on their blog to the startup community, how is your startup doing? Um, what are some of the struggles you face in to overcome? Because I think they want to capture these stories to figure out exactly what is the real way of addressing some things. And and I thought it was a cool way to do it through their blog because um, it will it was a natural way of all of us how we communicate with each other these days, right? We say our opinion on a blog. You know, then other people chime in, and cool. so uh, I haven't seen. Um, I heard that they're using Storify for certain uh, items like oh, this, right. but I haven't seen a Storify on this yet. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think it was kind of—it's kind of a good move on their part to try to figure out, you know, how can they support the startup communities a little bit better. Uh, so, you know, as they, as on April fifth. The president signed the Jumpstart Our Business Startups Act, right? The, they call it Jobs Act. It was really kind of interesting. So it's a, it's a bipartisan bill that, that that many of the president's proposals to encourage startups to support our nation's small business. I, I, I think it's a signal also, right? Mm-hmm. You know, we've tried to revigorate big industry yeah. here. Yeah. And, and, and quite frankly, big industry and manufacturing – that's a, that, that's a tough road, yeah, you know, yeah. especially with a lot of the competition overseas. So yeah. I think he's he's now supporting the notion which everyone has been talking about for the last 10 years in, in the United States is is strengthen the development and the R&D side mm-hmm. so that you, we know all those jobs are going away from manufacturing, mm-hmm. but, you know, we're still hold all the technology. Yeah. So I, I, I would think argue I, you have I gone like, away from manufacturing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, I think there's a lot of things that kind of put that on the skids, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so I think yeah. I thought you know I like to at least you know, say kudos. I'm not sure exactly um, how their policies are going to kind of filter out of this, mm-hmm. but at least you know they're trying to engage with the startup community. And from our you and I standpoint, you know, I guess you know we love it, right? Yeah. Because at least at least we have access to someone who may might have some ways of helping us out here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good story, man. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, um, I, I was interested in this thing that you sent out this week, a mystery company backed by James Cameron and Google executives. Yeah. Maybe an asteroid mining project? Space! You know, Greg looks kind Space. of like an astronaut today. I, I told him with his headphones on, but uh, it's not. It's a... Uh, Geek look. Geek yeah. look. We could see uh, Greg on an asteroid, couldn't we? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one, thanks to Andy Rob- Robertson for this story. MIT's technology review has gotten news of a mysterious new project that claims it will, quote, create a new industry and a new definition of natural resources, unquote. Space exploration company Planet Resources will be unveiled in a conference call on Tuesday, April 24th. Uh, besides the audacious announcement, which promises to overlay two critical sectors, space exploration and natural resources, to add trillions of dollars to the global GDP, is what they claim. What makes this unique is its high-profile support group. The venture is backed by Google executives Larry Page and Eric Schmidt, director James Cameron, and politician Ross Perot's son, among others. Wow. So, um, wow. you know, it's kind of a fun story there. Like, um, I think there was a, like a movie about this, right? End of the world. These guys, they have to go and, and drill a bomb or something into a meteor that's coming to hit the planet or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Bruce Willis or something like that? I know. I think that's, uh, yeah, Greg yeah, told me earlier, exactly. Bruce Willis is exactly. his favorite actor. So, in case you people don't know, if you write to Greg, Greg at nerdstalker.com, tell him I like Bruce Willis too, please. Oh, so yeah, sorry. exactly. Just tweet it out, and I'll respond to <laughs> it immediately go. within ten milliseconds. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Mining in space. All right, so uh, it's time speed round All right. already. Speed round. Speed, speed round. round. <laughs> uh, I'll start it off here. Yeah, um, take it away. Facebook app bug can steal your account info if a hacker grabs your phone. So um, a new spooky security hole has been discovered in the Facebook and Dropbox apps for iOS and Android. But you shouldn't worry about it unless you give your phone to a hacker or someone steals it. Um, Yeah, that's probably possible, huh? (laughs) But um, here's how it works. Um, Hacker physically gets access to your phone. He or she would be able to connect to your computer or access your file system. And then they could export a simple text file with all your account data because Facebook and Dropbox aren't encrypted. 
on your data on your phone. So read about that on the. I'll put the link up, but read about that. It was it's kind of interesting, but I don't know if uh, we'll see any fixes uh, soon for that. But it was interesting that it was brought up by um, uh, Gizmodo. Uh, it was a really cool article. So anyway. Take That's it away, awesome, speed round number two for you. Yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah. this is Senses from the Senses, it's SensesProject.com. It is a full-on media center all built in HTML5, which is incredible with JavaScript hmm. and CSS, of course. Um, so check it out at SensesProject.com. So no, inst no installation magic in a web browser is what they claim. Senses is a web app. It means no installation is required. Instant updates and runs on all desktop computer platforms. Simply launch Senses and add it as a bookmark for faster access, why not, to experience the next generation in media centers. Even cooler, share an artist, album, or any other part of the, of the library by just copying and pasting what you, need, what you see in the address bar. Your friends will go straight to the same location you're exploring. So for more information, check them out. Go to you know, censusproject.com. Uh, I spoke to the actually creator of this project, and uh, we're, we're looking to mm. set up an interview with him soon, which should be really cool. Nice. Uh, check it out, you guys. It's, nice. It's a really interesting sort of, um, it's very early stages right now, uh, very bare bones. There's only Creative Commons type of stuff on there at this point. Um, but it really showcases what the web can eventually become, you know. Very, very cool mm, stuff. Nice. How about you, Greg? Nice. Speed reaction. Nice. Okay. Yes. Carriers banned to fight cell phone theft. Well, we talked about this, I think, in November on our podcast about the rash of uh, stolen iPhones here in San Francisco, right? And, you know, a lot of people had some suggestions on what to do. A lot of it really centered around more technology. Well, Underwhelming, but true. Uh, a report from uh, Rolf Winkler uh, uh, from the Wall Street Journal through All Things Digital, All Things D, um, the major wireless providers have agreed to deal with the U.S. government to build a central database of stolen cell phones as part of an effort to tame an explosion of thefts nationwide. So wow. I guess the database is designed to really track phones that are reported or stolen and deny them voice and data service. I, I, it, it's kind of a, a roundabout way. I, I can understand how complicated it is dealing with all all um, all carriers at this point, but I, I thought it would be easier just to implement it in technology, but it looks like no one really wants to spend effort, so we'll just create a huge-ass database and uh, <laughs> just track it that way. And then if it's on the database, it's called the Do Not Steal database, Do I call it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and uh, we'll see how that goes, but I thought it was interesting, but underwhelming yeah, yeah. so anyway <laughs> yeah so so mine mix.js is the next one yes. it's a uh, chrome experiment another oh. full-on um web audio well, so what it uses is the web audio api and canvas uh which is an html5 mm. uh type of uh, uh feature uh multi it offers multi-track mixing and real-time metering with web audio oh nice uh, this guy kevin ennis nice. is the creator you can they have a phoenix song the from the band phoenix from france or whatever that they preview and uh you can go in and you can play with this full-on web-based mixer it's amazing i mean it's just html css javascript like i said uh it's a chrome experiment kind of thing check it out at mix.js um Nice. We'll, we'll post the we'll post the link. You do a Google for mix.js, and you can like uh what what I don't know if you guys are familiar with with mixers out there or whatever, but uh, if you have a song, you can like uh isolate certain things like just the vocals, maybe just the drums, uh that type of thing on just a particular song. This thing can pull extract uh, that type of data, all web based. Uh, no no, you, typically you need a piece of hardware or some really expensive software mm. to do this kind of thing right. or some sort right. of sophisticated right. installation type of software. This is all done on the browser. Very cool. Check out Mix.js. Wow. That's really cool. Yeah, I got to check that out. I've been doing some track mixes for some of our videos, so it's, uh, I'll definitely check that out. So great. Okay, last one, at least for, yeah, last one. Um, Lastly, speed round for me, um, the former RIM CEO resigned because his ideas were too good. Well, you know, as, as, as you know, yes. <laughs> that seems kind of funny, doesn't it? Yes. His ideas were too good. Uh, that's hard to believe. But <laughs> anyway, um, you know, Jim Vasily, um, the ex-RIM CEO, going had home. a plan. <laughs> well, yeah, we both put a fork in that 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 pig, right? <laughs> but uh, but anyway, um, he 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 was kind of, had this written, uh, radical idea, at least uh, from what writer Leslie Horn from Gizmodo had mentioned, um, that 
you know, they wanted to create this whole BlackBerry network where actually um, carriers would tie into um, and basically entice maybe like low tier customers to upgrade from their no frills phone phones to smartphones. So basically, a Wait, way of kind of. Did you just create a word called smones? Phones? That's smones. awesome. Yeah, smart phones. Trademark yeah, Adolfo. Smart I'm smones. selling this. I'm going to make millions. <laughs> Smones. <laughs> anyway, to get you know people from their feature phones to the new Smones. Yeah. And um, anyway, uh, I you know guys check that out because I you know even though you know we keep on beating on 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 how you know black players just blew it you know i thought <laughs> this was kind of an interesting uh yeah they are they, they got are a the black eye for sure now. aren't they <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that that next to microsoft i think yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah, point, yeah, <laughs> but uh check that one out we'll put it on there it was per reuters as well yeah, they had some um interesting links yeah, uh, to talk it. about that man so anyway, Greg, your right, tip, man, go your tip, what, tip time, tip time, tip time, tip time. Yes, yes. I saw this on you, and I sorry, I stole it from you, but I thought this was interesting to call <laughs> up here. Code Now, a startup nonprofit that teaches kids to code. So, mm-hmm. um, coding um, they feel is a new literacy, and uh, individuals uh, with the power to do that have the power to create and innovate. And I like that. I and so. They're saying, you know, it's just kind of like this STEM stuff, you know, the the the, the math, yeah. engineering, science stuff, technology. technology yeah. mm-hmm. You know, they're saying this is really part of that, mm-hmm. and they want to like create the next uh, technology pioneers. Yeah. So um, it's awesome. a nonprofit uh, that teaches underrepresented high school students how to code, That's and you catch awesome. them at www.codenow.org. Okay, what's your tip, sir? Yes, my tip is. Add hands-free uh, reading to any web page. So thanks to, I believe it was Lifehacker who gave me this tip. Um, mm, yeah. With uh, So without Good having to reach there. for your mouse or keyboard to scroll down every few seconds, you know, sometimes you're, you're like doing this to read a story or whatever, you know. Uh, the hands-free yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, bookmark list bookmarklet is here to help uh, adding hands-free page scrolling to any web page in any browser so to set it up you just head to the hands free that's r-f-e-a-d get it free and read all one word that's like smone kind of uh <laughs> uh, so you go to their homepage and you set your uh, preferred scroll interval and increment. So you can scroll in smooth one pixel increments or scroll in larger chunks every few seconds, whatever your preference. Uh, and drag the hands freed bookmarklet to your bookmark toolbar. Whenever you could benefit uh, from some auto scrolling, just click the bookmarklet and you're off to the races. Get the book bookmarklet at http uh colon four slash four slash hands free dot heroku app dot com so we'll add the url oh nice here. nice cool. nice i like that i yeah, like man. that I so anyway I, upcoming I events what do you got going on a, man oh man we have a busy week the way this week um yeah, japanese entrepreneur week we're labeling it yeah shoot I, I think we have five events um <laughs> uh, april 24th with uh, business dojo uh, on uh, effective presentation skills in america uh, awesome. uh, from v track ceo brandon k hill and then the next day we have two events uh sf japan night as we all know um we have some six cool startups in fact uh i'm gonna <gasps> someone's gonna play my keyboards at that event so that's gonna be interesting yes. i've never seen anyone play my keyboards yet so anyway um um, and and that same night, we're also presenting at the Apple Store, um, no uh, one of our handwriting uh, handwriting apps that we highlighted here on NerdStalker. So I'd oh, like great. to uh, give a shout out to that. Um, that'll be from 5:30 to 7, and uh, and SF New Tech SF Japan night will be from 5:30. The doors open, but the uh, pitches start at 7:30 and close around 9. So awesome. come see that. Uh, we got another event Thursday. Uh, uh, how to find cross cultural talent. Uh, 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 in partnership with Asia Society and B Tracks, we have an event uh, downtown. Uh, you catch that uh, on our website. And then the last one, we're having a party after Japan night. Probably after all this, we'll all need a party. We need yeah. a 24 hour party yeah. or something like oh, that. You'll see me at that um, one. People. We're gonna uninvited. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. Uh, on on my on Gr- social Greg's guest yeah, list yeah. probably. Yeah. But uh, we'll be having a after party at uh, a place to be determined. Although if I told you, you guys would all show up, right? <laughs> so so I'll tell you off. I'll, I'll tell you offline, oh, uh, Adolfo. But oh. but anyway, yeah, we're pretty busy that weekend. Uh, anyway. Um, 
May 10th. Uh, what's going on? Man? That's right. So as many of you may or may not know, uh, we are helping to promote uh, Taste of Patrol. So it's to be- benefit a local public school here that is really in need here. Uh, Taste of Patrol, you can get more information at tasteofpatrol.com. As Greg said, it is on May 10th. There's going to be a lot of high-end restaurants and wineries type of representing there, uh, auctioning. It's going to be a lot of fun. You can purchase your tickets at tasteofpatrol.com. Uh, we have a uh, Comstock Saloon in SF, which Anthony Bourdain featured. will be there also uh, with, with nice. some of their tasting fairs and their, of their food and drink. Uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Miscellaneous with his really fancy, awesome ice cream type of place here in, in Dog Patch uh, and uh, uh, Dynamo Donuts, a famous mission area uh, bakery type of place. Uh, they do an incredible type of bacon donuts. If you're into wow. bacon donuts, ooh, ooh, mama, bacon maple, <laughs> maple whatever donuts. Ooh, it's mama. fantastic. Stuff. So okay. tastepatrol.com, get more information there. Just don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. don't forget, so, you guys, uh, you know, get more information, participate, uh, give us some stories if you can. Use the hashtag NRDSDK on Twitter if you have a particular story if you'd like me and Greg to talk about. Or to go, go to nerdstalker.com or, you know, better yet, just go to iTunes and, and sign up for our audio or video podcast. Please. And, and then uh, give us some nice high star rating, five star rating would be wonderful. And a review, that'd be great. Um, or just go to YouTube and do a search for Nerdstalker TV and you could always watch us there as well. So, uh, anyways, I am Adolfo Ferranda. You can reach me at NerdStalker on Twitter, Adolfo at NerdStalker.com if you want to email me. How about you, Greg? And me with the Tokyo Giants geek outfit here is um, <laughs> I'm Social Greg, a.k.a. Greg Valoria. You can catch me on Twitter at Social Greg, or you can catch me um, on email, uh, Social Greg at NerdStalker.com. Anyway, oh, last shout out. Uh, I'm doing this for you, Michael. So you told me I was a otaku, which is called geek in Japanese, by the way. So I put this on especially for you. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thanks again. Anyway, thanks, everyone, for watching and listening. Be careful. Yeah, be careful out there. <laughs>